My name is Benjamin Ill. I'm a third year PhD candidate here at the School of Biomedicine. I'm a part of the Cognitive Aging and Neurodegenerative Disease Laboratory that we like to call CANDLE for short. Um, so as a general summary, my research is having a look at the non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease and their longitudinal outcomes. So what was once thought primarily as a motor disorder, we now know that there's so many more non-motor symptoms that are tied to Parkinson's disease that are quite undercommonly characterised and hard to interpret and hard to predict who's going to get those symptoms quite badly. So my research is trying to find ways to predict those, you know, more deleterious um, outcomes long term compared to people who might not experience those non-motor symptoms as bad as other people. If you know anyone with Parkinson's disease, everyone experiences it quite differently. Um, there's no one size fits all, even with the motor symptoms, but in particular those non-motor symptoms as well. So yeah, my research is just trying to have a look at finding ways to predict who's going to get those long-term outcomes a bit more severely. And if we can find out who's most at risk, we can intervene a little bit earlier and hopefully provide more personalised care. So we're doing that a few different ways. So we have a bit of a multimodal approach. Um, the first thing that we're doing is looking at some genetic factors. We're also having a look at some um, biomarker analysis. So my research in particular is more so interested in capturing the uh, cognitive and mood performance at the time of a Parkinson's diagnosis to see how that can translate long term and use that information in combination with lots of other different um, techniques to predict who's going to get those symptoms quite badly. So we're quite lucky, we've actually got some partnerships with the Australian Institute of Machine Learning and we're with collaborations being able to incorporate a automated machine learning approach to be able to produce some algorithms that we can give to clinicians to be able to predict those outcomes quite severely. So at the moment you get diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and it's really hard to individually know what your trajectory is going to look like. So a clinician might just be able to provide statistics. So we know currently that over the time of diagnosis, about 83% of people with Parkinson's develop a Parkinson's disease associated dementia. Um, and that's all we're able to provide. So what we're really hoping to be able to do is provide clinicians with better information to say, hey, you've just been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, here's what your clinical presentation looks like, here's some biomarker analysis, here's some imaging techniques, and we might be able to produce you know, algorithms to say, hey, you've kind of presented X, Y, Z, you're at this particular risk of those long-term impairments from there. So another approach that I'm particularly taking is having a look at the role of neuroimaging. So once again, someone gets diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. What we're hoping is the first thing we can do is get them in for an MRI or a neuroimaging scan. And we'll be able to try and identify imaging markers that might be able to predict those long-term outcomes. So we know that dopamine plays a crucial role in the regulation of those non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So we're having a look at um, dopamine markers within the brain to be able to see if what happens at time of diagnosis can translate to what happens long term with those cognitive and mood changes. So we're looking at nice brainstem areas such as the um, substantia nigra, um, the locus ceruleus, and we're also looking at some other regions that are dopamine producing but aren't affected with Parkinson's disease such as the red nucleus. So through the support of the NRF, we're currently in the process of recruiting people with Parkinson's disease to help us answer the questions that we want to answer in our lab. So if you have Parkinson's disease yourself, or you know someone who might be keen to get involved, um, we're currently actively recruiting people to be on board to go through a number of sessions, um, but you don't have to do all the different sessions. But the main two sessions that we'll get you to do is just to come on in and complete a series of cognitive style-like tasks. Um, as well as completing out a survey, as I mentioned, to be able to take those baseline characteristics um, to see how that will translate over time. 
And our second session is actually down at Samri, where we'll have the opportunity um, for you to come in and undergo an MRI scan to be able to see how we can link those imaging structures or those brain regions to the cognitive and mood performance that you did in the first session and see how when we add that into the equation, does that predict those long-term changes? Hi everyone, I'm Angus McNamara. I'm a third year PhD candidate at the Cognitive Cognition, Ageing and Neurodegeneration Lab under Lindsay Collins Prano. And my project is all about the utility of inflammatory biomarkers to predict brainstem imaging changes in both Parkinson's disease and um, traumatic brain injury. So the real importance of this project is that currently there's a real big issue with misdiagnosis surrounding Parkinson's. And that's, a, that's for multiple reasons. Like for example, diagnosis is really reliant on these um, motor symptoms which are only sort of manifest later on in disease development and also currently diagnosis is really subjective and that does lead to higher rates of misdiagnosis so we're hoping to sort of understand and characterize anatomical changes and pathological changes that predate these symptoms developing and in hopes that we can rely on more objective ways of diagnosing people so hopefully this means more people get diagnosed accurately and potentially earlier on so they get more access to treatment and care. So what my project entails, um, it's a clinical project that involves having roughly about 100 Parkinson's uh, participants come in and what I do is I actually uh, get an MRI scan from them and we get a suite of different sort of scans that look at various different things like um, uh, structural qualities of certain regions that are affected in Parkinson's like the Substantia nigra and other less known regions that are also implicated in more subtle symptoms. I also look at stuff like diff uh, changes to white matter or like tracks, so those pathways that are really affected during Parkinson's as well as some other imaging which I'm happy to go over if anyone ever comes in for a testing. But um, on top of that I also look at um, biomarkers in your blood and saliva and the real goal of mine is to see how predictive those sort of um, biomarkers are of those brainstem imaging changes. Um, so how I got into this research is a little bit of column A, column B, I kind of fell into it in a way, but I was very sort of attracted to the fact that my project is very multifaceted. Not only do I get to work with people, which is a really rewarding experience, but I get to learn a whole bunch of new things. Like my project involves neuroimaging, it involves biomarker analysis, it involves so much more than I could have anticipated before going in, but it's a really rewarding experience. And I kind of really, I really appreciate the um, opportunity that's been afforded to me to sort of learn all these new skills. I do think my project is very important and I'm very lucky to be on, on it. So I think it can really actually be very beneficial in not only helping people get diagnosed earlier, but it can also be used in conjunction with other aspects of the study, which will be talked about in this video as well, to overall kind of better understand long-term outcome and care as well. So hopefully not only could this project help uh, get people diagnosed more effectively and earlier, but it could also potentially help sort of understand individual sort of um, journeys and basically helping personalise treatment and care, which is very much needed in healthcare currently. So my name is Isaac Sable. I am a um, PhD student at the University of Adelaide, um, studying a bit of a bit of psych and a bit of um, medicine as well. So I'm sort of split 50-50 across those um, disciplines focusing a lot on like um, different aspects of cognition and also a bit of behavioural neuroscience as well. So um, both my supervisors, are, my primary supervisor is Irina Batu in the School of Psychology and my co-supervisor is um, Lindsay collins Prano from the um, School of Biomedicine. Um, and my project title, which um, it's probably not going to stay the same throughout the whole way through. Um, it's looking at a, um, I'm looking at developing a new measure for a hypothetical brain construct called um, cognitive reserve, which is basically looking at um, brain resilience overall in different conditions of healthy aging and also in neurodegeneration as well. Say you've got two people, one has the, they both have the same level of deterioration in the brain um, and one has a higher cognitive reserve and one has a lower one. So the person with a higher cognitive reserve tends to see a decline in their function at a later period in the disease when pathology is a bit more increased, whereas someone with a low reserve will start declining a bit earlier. Basically, my project is trying to identify a better way to, that we can assess it, because currently it's assessed mostly through different proxies. So um, these proxies are just different lifetime experience factors. So things like education, 
occupation, um, cognitively stimulating activities and how much a person participates in these. Most of our participants come, at, come, come to the lab and we run them through about a two and a half hour testing session down there. Um, I also have some involvement in some at home testing with um, some people with Parkinson's disease where we go out to their homes because it is quite difficult to access our lab at times, especially for people um, who are a bit impaired. Uh, and we also, I do, I am involved with a bit of testing that we do at our imaging centre down at Samory. Um, so at our at Creek down there where we do a lot of our MRI testing, our blood testing and also some more behavioural testing. And we test things like memory, reasoning ability, abstract thinking, um, learning as I said before, lots of different measures. Um, and we also then do after that some more interactive stuff where we'll test, um, do some genetic testing through saliva sampling as well as doing some um, basic one-on-one -on -one cognitive screening that is often done in the clinical setting as well as doing some simple motor assessments where we've converted um, a lot of uh, Wii devices. So if people remember the little um, Wii controller and Wii Fit board, we've converted those to be um, both tremor and um, balance assessments. Myself, Angus and Ben are looking at doing some diffusion tensor imaging, um, specifically in a TBI cohort, so traumatic brain injury cohort, where we're looking at identifying how um, different white matter tracts related to the basal ganglia in the brain, which is a common area of the brain affected in Parkinson's disease, and how those connections and those pathways to that basal ganglia are impacted by a traumatic brain injury using these um, MRI techniques.